I thought I'd give you a quick overview about me before we jump straight into the presentation. Um, I have had a very long-term relationship with Moodle when I started to think about it this morning. In fact, it might be one of my most, my longest standing relationships. Um, I'm just about young enough to have learnt using Moodle, um, so I, was, I used it in my uh, college days, um, and then uh, became a college um, tutor, um, so was forced to use Moodle in a different um, manner. Uh, as, a, as an educator, and then since then have gone to various roles in corporate um, organizations uh, in an L&D role, so have again used, um, not always Moodle, but Moodle has been in and out of my kind of um, working life. Um, and recently joined Catalyst IT, um, so now have a huge involvement with Moodle, with many of the um, clients we work with. Um, and I wanted to talk to you today, so when I was asked to present at Moodle, Moodle I, I sort of thought, well, um, I'm quite new to Catalyst, what can I talk about that has, is relevant to the Moodle MOOC community? And I started to think about how when I look back at my use of Moodle, sometimes some of it was a little bit painful, particularly in the configuration or in the kind of making sure that everything was consistent and nice and attractive. Um, and so I wanted to show you um, something that we've put together for one of our customers um, that really simplifies the course creation process and standardizes um, that the course sort of view and course look and feel at the end of that. Um, so obviously everything that we tend to work um, through is essentially presented to us as a challenge. We have a need, we have a challenge. Um, and the challenge that I'm going to talk about today is essentially to empower everybody to have um, or to be able to create Moodle courses. So when you boil that down, you think, great, give them all Moodle um, administrator access, job done, um, see you later. Uh, it's not actually that easy usually, particularly if you want to have some control over the kind of content that's being presented through your Moodle and also the end user experience on, upon that content. Um, essentially here you can see the, the sort of challenge that was set to us. I think it's fair to say that most Moodle content is usually created by a Moodle admin or a similar role and they've usually had some training or some onboarding or upskilling in order to um, perform that role. Uh, it's sort of technical, there's some technical lingo in some of those sort of um, forms that you have to complete. Uh, and to set the scene, the, the, the use for this Moodle that I'm going to show you in a moment is um, following on from Paul Stevens' conference, if you were here earlier or talk earlier, it's for a humanitarian um, organization who are delivering um, learning in disaster zones, war zones, um, areas of little or low bandwidth, so we talked about offline earlier. Um, but essentially, the subject matters, subject matter experts are the people we want creating that content, and there's lots of them, and they're out there, and we don't necessarily have the means to bring them all in and train them how to create Moodle courses. So we needed to ensure that uh, very quickly somebody could learn how to do so. Um, also, just a, a final note on here that, um, you know, a lot of this content is being generated in multiple languages um, and, and there's quite a few various formats of content and so again, it would be a very unwieldy task for sort of a, one or two people to try and maintain. Um, so we, we, we looked at the challenge that was presented to us and we actually identified that there were three, uh, three kind of areas that we needed to focus. One was the course creation process. And so, um, essentially, um, you can see on my bullet points up here, when creating the new course, the page is presented with, um, it is quite technical, confusing sometimes, and there is a large margin for inconsistency or error in, some, in the, the sort of standard Moodle course creation page. Um, the number of configurable options, we almost counted them earlier, but we sort of run out of counting time, so um, we'll say tens um, of configurable options, and lots of sort of um, various setups that you can do in that, that form. Um, and of course also you want to be able to ensure that some mandatory information or mandatory fields are completed in the course creation form um, and that can also be a bit of a, a sort of a, a pain point for some, for some course creators, particularly if they're new to the course creation process in Moodle. Um, and the potential for variation in your end um, sort of course, if you like, is, is large. Um, this also led into another um, sort of requirement or, or um, challenge within the, the overall challenge and that was to present a very, very clear and attractive catalogue um, based on essentially the design was sort of almost a carbon copy of the eBay catalogue um, which you'll see in a moment 
Um, but again, if you're having multiple course creators creating content, it's very difficult to ensure that your course catalog is absolutely consistent and designed um, consistently. Um, and we also wanted to try and use a number of visual prompts or um, symbols to try and convey information quickly um, from, the, from the course information that was presented. And finally, um, and it's uh, great because um, we've heard about it quite a lot over the past two days, particularly in the keynotes, um, but improving the search functionality, both the search that's included within Moodle, but also the search um, or the findability, if you like, of this content on the, on the World Wide Web. So ensuring that internal search was um, improved or um, further sort of developed, but also that Google, for instance, could find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through some screenshots of um, what we put together to support uh, this simplified course creation process. Um, I'm a bit concerned that, it, that the Moodle theme is blue, and I know that this, um, that this has had a bit of a washout on blue, so I might find myself describing some stuff. But in short, to meet the challenge, we built um, a course publishing workflow, um, kind of a next, next, next click-through experience for the end user which almost led your hand into completing the required or mandatory fields ready to present in a consistent catalog. <coughs> um, we you know, styled the catalog on the eBay catalog and integrated um, Solar open source search um, to reap some of the benefits that are included there. So, can you see it? <laughs> um, so, one of the first things we did was we outlined, you know, what are the course formats or content, course content types, if you like, that you want to be able to publish, that you want your end, uh, your course creators to be able to publish. Um, and uh, we've identified here that there are seven or six at this stage, seven, eight, eight at this stage. Um, so you've got kind of audio content, an external learning piece of content, an event. Um, you can see SCORM down here in the bottom left if you want to add a SCORM package. Um, Skillsoft, they have an account with Skillsoft and so on. So, um, very simple for a, a course creator to just um, pick the, pu the content they want to publish uh, and you'll, n you'll notice now that we enter a kind of a tabbed, can you see it? Hmm. Oh, okay, <laughs> there are tabs over where you can see overview, okay, and the tabs say overview, classification, certificate, evaluation and availability and I'm just going to run through those tabs, okay. So the first tab that you can see here is the overview tab. Um, and this is just your summary text, the, the name of your course, um, the sort of basic detail that needs to be presented um, on your, your course information. Um, and over on the right hand side, the one that I'm running you through here is actually a SCORM package. Um, so in the screenshot on the right hand side, you've got the, the normal drag and drop space where you can drop your SCORM package into the course creator wizard um, and um, various other sort of further information fields and so on. I'm just going to jump to the next tab. So the next tab, um, the user just clicks along and the top and the tabs, the next tab is classifications. And this becomes quite relevant later on when we look at the course catalogue that we present because the classifications are like your filters. And so the course creator can now look at all of the various filters that they would like this course to be um, found or applied to find this course. Um, there's a number of um, sort of classification topics. You've got the format, um, the language, the provider. Now, they do not want to be the only sort of humanitarian um, organization who are providing content. So the idea is that many humanitarian um, organizations could serve, um, you know, uh, crisis or aid content through this platform. So they can be added as providers. Um, yeah, as I say, language, location, and any competencies that this course will achieve. Um, well, they're just tick boxes or radio buttons, um, and then the, the user can move to the next tab, um, which is the certificate tab, and so they then have the option to present a certificate upon completion of this course. Um, so this is the standard certificate stuff that's within Moodle, but again, just added to this tabbed um, publishing workflow approach, sort of a next, next, next. You can upload your um, sort of certificate to this space. Uh, and we've got the save and next button at the bottom. Um, and then the final tab that, I'm, that we get is availability. Now this ties into the um, talk that Paul gave earlier um, because uh, 
there's, a, there's only a few um, content types are available in our offline player or in the offline player. And so at this point, you're able to select whether this content will be available in the offline player um, and, and, and whether it's sort of responsive for a tablet um, screen and so on. Okay. So standardize is that next, next, next. Um, at this point, the course is kind of submitted but to be approved. Now, in discussions at the moment, um, so far, when they click submit, it just goes live. Um, but it's a configurable option, and at the moment, this organization have chosen content to just be published, but we have implemented a step that would enable um, you know, a central approval team, if you like, to come in and approve that content before making it publicly visible. But at this time, it begins to be indexed by the searches and so on. Okay? So, how did it go? Um, again, you probably can't see that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> course catalog um, it, basically um, it's eBay in blue if you like um, but you can see that it's very standard we've got a great graphic on every course you can see some colored prompts so below these course I um, graphics you can see greens and blues and yellows and they relate to the topic that that course um, is um, and you can also see down the left hand side that we've got the the topics that were applied earlier uh, the filters so as we can filter throughout the the catalog and find content relevant to our language, our region, um, or maybe a particular type of crisis or um, aid requirement. Okay. Um, again, there's some symbols that are presented at the bottom in these blue bars. The very bottom one, you'll notice a symbol on the very far right-hand side, which suggests that that course can be taken offline. And then we've also um, placed in a course information page. So when you click through from the catalog, you're presented with a full course information page, um, which again is all consistently designed and applied according to the publishing workflow and the information that was added, and is also fully indexed by um, you know, the World Wide Web search engines, or such as Google, let's say. The visual prompts are repeated. We have a block region in the right-hand side, um, which we apply a Google Translate block. Um, so very easy to provide standard um, courses. Um, so how has that sort of, how, what is the results for so far? Um, so it's been, it was a very soft launch um, and it's sort of um, ramping up. It's been live for roughly two months um, in terms of fully live. Um, and at the moment, there are about 30 users in the platform that have the course publishing rights. It's still not uh, that everybody has publishing rights. You do need to gain permission to publish content. Um, and it's a role, um, and so there are 30 people with that role. Um, 80 courses are live on the platform, five languages, um, and you actually saw a heat map presented in the previous um, uh, presentation if you were here. It's currently being um, interacted with across 146 or more countries. This was you know, submitted a week or two back. Um, and then we talked today about the future, and there's a great idea that's um, coming from these, this client of ours, which is to essentially create a course within the platform that presents or prepares you to use the publishing workflow and the completion of which provides you with publishing rights or the publishing role. Um, so a self-serving um, onboarding experience, if you like, and then ensuring that the subject matter experts who are out there in the field um, can get on and create um, you know, critical course content. That's it. Thank you.